Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to this video in our series on IGCSE Business Studies. This is Unit 4, Part 2. In today's lesson, we will be learning about the costs, scale of production, and break-even analysis. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Starting today, let's look at costs. Firstly, fixed costs. Fixed costs are costs that do not vary with the output produced or sold in the short run. They are incurred even when the output is zero, and will remain the same in the short run. In the long run, they may change. These are also known as overhead costs. An example is rent. Even if production has not started, the firm still has to pay the rent. Next, variable costs. Variable costs are costs that directly vary with the output produced or sold. Examples are material costs and wage rates that are only paid according to the output produced. Some equations that you must remember are Total cost is equal to total fixed cost plus total variable costs. Or to put it another way, total cost is equal to average cost multiplied by the output. Average cost or unit cost is equal to the total cost divided by the total output. A business can use this cost data to make different decisions. Some examples are setting prices. If the average cost of one unit is $3, then the price would be set at $4 to make a profit of $1 on each unit. Deciding whether to stop production. If the total cost exceeds the total revenue, a loss is being made, and so the production might be stopped. Deciding on the best location. Locations with the cheaper costs will be chosen. Next, scale of production. As output increases, a firm's average cost tends to decrease. Why is this? Economies of scale are the factors that lead to a reduction in average costs as a business increases in size. The five economies of scale are Purchasing economies For large output, a large number of components have to be bought. This will give them some bulk buying discounts that reduce costs. Marketing economies Larger businesses will be able to afford their own vehicles to distribute goods and advertise on paper and TV. They can cut down on marketing labor costs. The advertising rates costs also do not rise as much as the size of the advertisement ordered by the business. Average costs will thus reduce. Financial economies. Bank managers will be more willing to lend money to large businesses as they are more likely to be able to pay off the loan than small businesses. Thus they will be charged a low rate of interest on their borrowings, reducing average costs. Managerial economies. Large businesses may be able to afford to hire specialist managers who are very efficient and can reduce the business's costs. Technical economies. Large businesses can afford to buy large machinery such as a flow production line that can produce a large output and reduce average costs. We also need to talk about diseconomies of scale. Diseconomies of scale are the factors that lead to an increase in the average costs of a business as it grows beyond a certain size. They are Poor communication As a business grows large, more departments and managers and employees will be added and communication can get difficult. Messages may be inaccurate and slow to receive, leading to lower efficiency and higher average costs in the business. Low morale. When there are lots of workers in the business and they have non-contact with their senior managers, the workers may feel unimportant and not valued by management. This would lead to inefficiency and higher average costs. Slow decision making. As a business grows larger, its chain of command will get longer. Communication will get very slow and so any decision making will also take time, since all employees and departments may need to be consulted. 
A recent trend is that businesses are now dividing themselves into small units that can control themselves and communicate more effectively, to avoid any diseconomies from arising. Moving on, let's look at break-even. The break-even level of output is the output that needs to be produced and sold in order to start making a profit. So, the break-even output is the output at which total revenue equals total costs or, neither a profit nor loss is made, but all costs are covered. A break-even chart can be drawn, that shows the costs and revenues of a business across different levels of output and the output needed to break even. Look in the video description for a link to a worked example of calculating the break-even level of output. This is something you may be asked to do in an exam. What are the advantages of break-even charts? Managers can look at the graph to find out the profit or loss at each level of output. Managers can change the costs and revenues and redraw the graph to see how that would affect profit and loss, for example, if the selling price is increased or variable cost is reduced. The break-even chart can also help calculate the safety margin the amount by which sales exceed the break-even point. In the worked example, if the business decided to sell 2,000 units, their margin of safety would be 1,000 units. In sales terms, the margin of safety would be 1,000 multiplied by 8, or $8,000. They are $8,000 safe from making a loss. The margin of safety, in units, equals units being produced and sold minus break-even output. What are the limitations of break-even charts? They are constructed assuming that all units being produced are sold. In practice, there is always an inventory of finished goods. Not everything produced is sold off. Fixed costs may not always be fixed if the scale of production changes. If more output is to be produced, an additional factory or a new machine may be needed that increases fixed costs. Break-even charts assume that costs can always be drawn using straight lines. Costs may increase or decrease due to various reasons. If more output is produced, workers may be given an overtime wage that increases the variable cost per unit and causes the variable cost line to track upwards. Break-even can also be calculated without drawing a chart. The following formula can be used. Break-even level of production equals total fixed cost divided by the contribution per unit. Contribution per unit is equal to the selling price minus the variable cost per unit. This is the value added or contributed to the product when sold. In the worked example, the contribution is $8 minus $3 which equals $5, so the break-even level is $5,000 divided by $5, which equals 1,000 units. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share and comment below so we can clarify things for you.